So, Mark, did you see that the Fighting Irish Notre Dame came to town for their uh, Shamrock series this past weekend? And uh, they won. I think they beat BYU by a touchdown or something. But the cool thing about it was that they died or they changed the light bulbs on the Las Vegas sign, turned them green for the Irish. I know you're not a big Notre Dame fan, but that's how disrespectful to BYU, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But no, we don't need to give uh, Notre Dame fans any more of a big head. So, no, it is it is pretty cool. I do not like Notre Dame. You know, they're a rival of us and and everybody in the Big Ten kind of has. A sore spot for them. Uh, just join the conference already, so you can play all your rivals. But whatever, it is what it is. But no, it's kind of cool. It looks like a whole bunch of the fans came out to to support it and come for the trip and everything. So that seems cool. They got to check out the stadium and got the W, which is important. But you know, it is disrespectful to BYU. They're 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 a decent name too, <laughs> and they're closer, right? They're they're much closer geographically. Uh, but I just I hope that this is a thing that they do more often, changing the light bulbs and. You know, you know, you see that with different buildings and stuff like that. I think it's a cool look. You just want a new uh, uh, birthday light bulb, like uh, <laughs> yes, where you can buy the green ones now. All right, Mark. Uh, just after we recorded last week our second episode, and we're doing two episodes a week. So if you haven't seen our latest ones, go back and, and check it out. We're doing shorter episodes now. If you haven't watched uh, any of our shows this past week, but. Just after we recorded last week, there was a stabbing on the Las Vegas Strip. Um, six people injured, two people killed. There's different varying accounts of how it happened, but basically he he ended up stabbing them. And just another high-profile incident, another tragedy on the Strip. Heart goes out to everybody involved, and it just sounds like it was another terrible event. But I guess this is going to bring up that chatter again. Is the Strip safe, or is this just another one of those random things that seems to be happening everywhere around the country? Yeah, it's really it's sad, and it happened, what, at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Like, you don't expect, usually stuff goes down. It's when people have been drinking or at night, and somebody gets upset at somebody. So it's totally unexpected. You think during the day nothing is going to happen, and... A guy walking around with a knife is is pretty crazy that it happened as long as it did. And it sounds like he went to an interview and seemed kind of off kilter at the win or was trying to get an interview carrying a knife. So it doesn't seem like this should have ever gotten to this this you know spot. Like somebody should have done something uh, before this. But sad to see. I don't know if it really means anything about Vegas. You know, the guy drove in from California. It, it, like you said, it's kind of happening everywhere, which is just a sad state of the world right now. And I think it, you know, Vegas maybe just attracts more of that type of people, people with mental illness because of the lights and everything going on. So they, they end up there more often or not. I, I don't know. It, it, it I, I definitely will give people some pause for sure. Yeah. The interview he did, I think was with the Telemundo station in LA two days before the, the stabbing. So when he was in LA saying he needed help, clearly he was mentally disturbed and, uh, you know, it was, it's just a terrible situation uh, for, for everybody, for the victims, obviously. And he's been charged with murder, and they caught him fairly quickly using a network of cameras that the police have. So they were able to pretty quickly identify who he was, track him via camera to wherever he went, and then arrest him. So good job on, uh, on doing that. And, uh, yeah, it's terrible. Just a reminder to always be diligent. But um, they were just doing their job, you know, out there providing fun to the tourists, taking pictures with Vegas showgirls. And uh, yeah, it ended uh, it ended uh, terribly. So uh, it sucks to have to cover this stuff. It sucks that we've had so many high profile things. This was just obviously October 1st just happened. So that's uh, the, that was the five year anniversary of the, the massacre on the Strip. And um, it's always bad for tourism, but uh, yeah, it's just, we see too many of these stories lately. Sad to start off with such a such a bad story, but we are getting some interesting news that we've talked about this throughout like the last year, Mark. Tillman Fertitta, the owner of Landry's and Golden Nugget, and I believe even the uh, Houston Rockets, I think he owns nowadays, uh, he bought land on the Strip right at the corner of Harmon and Las Vegas Boulevard where that Tex-Mex Cantina is and where that Travel Lodge is. Close the travel lodge. We basically had rumors that he's going to develop a new casino there, and they finally filed with the county what they're going to do. So a 43-story, 2,400-room casino. He paid $270 million for the land, and he's going to put up a, uh, I think it's only six acres of land, which is an insane small plot. Like, it's like Cosmo. You know, you would, I think Cosmo's like on twice that amount of land, and you feel like it's so small. So this is going to be a very tiny, huge casino but a big player coming to the strip, he he's you know he's about as big as they get. 
I wonder if it will be called uh, Golden Nugget as well, or or if they're going to do something different. We talked but... about this, and I think he has this upscale brand in Houston that he may use. That's the rumor. I forget the name of it, um, but not going to be Golden Nugget, I believe, as far as all the rumors go. But again, nothing firm has been announced yet. There's just filings, and I think on October 18th is when they're going to hear this and approve the casino. Should call it the Silver Nugget, but um, <laughs> the Platinum Nugget. I don't know, but... Yeah, that's I think you insane. made that joke before when we talked about this. We're Did just, we? Did I? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> People will tell us. <laughs> no, it, that is an insane amount of money for Lane. But you think about the strip, like this is primetime strip and there's, you know, it's un, undeveloped so somewhat because Travelage, you know, people have been making jokes about that forever. So this is kind of like one of the last few places that you could buy something, knock it down, put something in, you know, in the heart of the strip. So it will be interesting to see. I don't know how you're going to pack that many rooms and that that <laughs> in a casino into that small of a footprint, but you know, I guess it's going to be tall. Maybe it'll be the tallest building in Vegas or something. Yeah, it'll be. It's definitely going to be a Cosmo esque like property as far as how they make it very tall and uh, very skinny and narrow. Just a reminder that intersection is undergoing tons of kind of changes uh, just south of there. If you remember, the Hawaiian Marketplace closed, and that they announced a new three story mall. And then at Harmon Corner, you have that four-story mall uh, going in that we've we've provided construction updates on. So that corner more malls again, and more casinos. That's all Vegas yeah. needs. Malls, casinos, <laughs> and screens all over that corner. Uh, but that's it's happening. But I mean, this is this is almost like a bonus new casino, right? Everybody's looking at Fountain Blue, and there's been some other projects like Dream announced on the South Strip and stuff like that. But this is sort of the 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 one that kind of flew under the radar, and uh, maybe it'll be the coolest of all of them. Wild prediction. This gets built and finished before Fountain Blue does. <laughs> no, Fountain Blue will be open in a year. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. So that's what they that's say. Gonna, yeah, I don't it's been, it, it'll be open for a year for, since 2008. Yeah, oh my God. All right, so yeah, looking forward to that. We'll announce uh, more as we learn, and hopefully when they have that hearing on the 18th, we'll learn more details. But I expect that it's going to take quite a few years to build this property, and I don't think it's going to open before Fountain Blue. So we'll see. <laughs> well, with six acres, they can have a really small theater that maybe even Chris Angel could pack. So we'll see. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I wanted to talk about this new downtown hybrid hotel that's going in because I've never heard of this concept. It's from the same developers who developed the Todd English Hotel downtown, which is sort of like this very modern sort of boutique hotel. Um, but it's going to feature over 240 rooms, a restaurant, and then in their release, they say, and a laundry room, which... You know, it's a little strange that you're highlighting the laundry room of your hotel. It, it feels like a mixture. So it's going to have some residential units. Then it's going to have like a hostel like environment. So it, it almost feels like they took like a, a mixing like a, a Hyatt house or an extended stay concept with a like a WeWork kind of concept with the hostel concept and put it all in one building. And this is the future of hotels is what they're saying. Do you buy it? Uh, maybe for like millennials, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, it does make a bit of sense because everybody's doing work from home now and and can be a nomad and stuff. So I could see why they would be thinking maybe this is the trend of the future or where it's going if if companies stay this way with a lot of people working from home. And, you know, being in Detroit, I don't want to be here in February or whatever. If I could go stay in, at a reasonable place in Vegas that has a laundry room to wash my clothes, I guess, you know, that, that'd be kind of cool. And they have, if they have workplaces for you to sit at and and do your work where you're not cramped in a room because, you know, 99% of hotel rooms have a terrible setup for trying to get work done, very uncomfortable. So, you know, having these places to go and stuff, I think is a good concept. Uh, you know, it would have been really good if they did this a year ago and it was built. Like if this was the Todd English launch, I think it would have fit in perfectly. So hopefully the trend stays that it makes sense, but I think it'll be unique and something interesting. I don't know if it'll be like, the future of hotels, but I think it will have a place for sure. Yeah, I think it's an interesting concept. The Arts District is the perfect place for it. And this is the second hotel now going in that area after the Todd English Hotel. Um, so it's good to, you know, that they're providing a different area with that, it, it, like that concept fits that area very well. So I think that it'll probably do good there. And we've seen that in the wider hotel industry, like with their new brands, like for instance, Moxie from Marriott, where they have removed desks and, you know, They've made more public spaces for people to work and socialize and stuff like that and de-emphasize some of those spaces inside the rooms. So this could kind of fit in well with that. But uh, it looks pretty nice on the outside. Good to see more development coming downtown. You know, it's probably yeah. a little hipster for me. 
And we should say, if you haven't been to the Arts District and you go to Vegas, get off the Strip, get off Fremont, go check it out. Very unique, independently owned places, cool little bars, restaurants, you know, live entertainment, stuff like that. It's it's like being in a big city that's not Vegas. So it's kind of, you know, cool to go check out and, and you'll feel like you're in, you know, Seattle or San Antonio or Austin, something like that. Like this little area is, is pretty unique. So I definitely encourage everybody to go and take a peek, especially if you like beer, lots of breweries, stuff like that. Yeah, Arts District is really good. All right, so last story, uh, you sent this over, and I thought we could talk about it just briefly because I was a kid in Las Vegas. I grew up in Las Vegas. There's this picture of these two random kids sitting behind their mom at a slot machine at Cosmo, um, just sitting there. And I grew up in Las Vegas. I saw this all the time, usually at convenience stores, gas stations, people waiting for their parents don't make your kids wait for you while you gamble. It's terrible on so many levels. You know, I don't know. It sucks. So, like, the, you're saying the convenience store, are there, like, gambling machines in the, like, yeah. the 7-Eleven and stuff? And people would sit while their kids just, like, hang out in 7-Eleven or whatever? Yeah, 7-Eleven. The grocery, the grocery stores now, when, since they made smoking illegal, they're kind of cordoned off. They have their own rooms. But it used to be they were just out in the middle of the grocery store, so you would see that there. You still see that in, like, 7-Eleven or convenience stores. Um, yeah. I mean, sometimes in casinos, but unfortunately there are people who have a problem with it and they tend to drag their kids around and, uh, it sucks for the kids. And that picture is just so sad. Yeah. Hopefully the, you know, the, the people at Cosmo came in and stopped that or said, you, you need to take them, go to the room, go home, whatever. Uh, hopefully it didn't go on too long, but it is sad to see. I mean, this, this episode has been kind of depressing. Um, going <laughs> Yeah, I know. I This was actually supposed to be earlier in the show and I pushed it back. So let's not talk about this anymore. But uh, I pushed it back after the, the stabbing thing. I mean, there is some exciting things, obviously, with with the new casino and stuff. But, uh, you know, you can't overcome the realities of what's happening in, in Vegas when there's a shooting or a big national case. And, you know, this is another downside of gambling, of gaming, of casinos. And it's, it's yeah. Just and a, then you know, once they move to their phone and stuff, they'll just sit at home doing it while their kids are there. I guess that's <laughs> that's better because at least they're at home and, you know, they can do their own thing. But it also is worse because it's, you know, accessible at any time. So it's, gonna, you know, the future is going to be uh, interesting to see how this all plays out. Probably not for the better, uh, but we shall see. All right. Yeah, exactly. So don't leave your kids in the middle of casinos. But we want to talk about all these topics with you guys uh, obviously, the new casino. What would you like to see from that new Tillman Fertitta casino on the Strip? Silver Nugget. Uh, yeah. What, what should the name be? Did Mark make that same joke last time we talked about this when it was just a rumor? <laughs> Let us know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, smash the notification bell so that you'll receive all notifications of all of our videos. We're releasing two videos a week right now, Tuesdays and Fridays. So uh, check out our next video in a couple days. And thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you Friday.